Analog horror is pretty cool, so like every YouTube critic, I decided to make my own. There's a lot of videos like that on YouTube. I made something in seven days. So I decided that not only will I make an analog horror short, I'll do it in seven days. That was, well, it wasn't quite a bad decision, but you'll see. Before we get started, let's explain what analog horror actually is. To understand it, we had to go back to 1927, when the first television was invented. I'm kidding, you know what analog horror is. If it's horror that looks like it's on VHS, then it's probably analog horror. I like doing a lot of research before diving into a project. I wanted to know what the best analog horror series did right, so I asked on Twitter, um, X, what the best series were, and you guys gave me some great suggestions. I went through and watched them all and took notes. Local 58, Mandela Catalog, Greylock, Vita Carnis. I also watched more that showed up in my recommended, like Boiled One Phenomenon. It's obvious while watching all of these why they're so popular. I let all these percolate in my head for a little while while finishing up my previous video. Then I set the date I'll begin work on my very own analog horror. To really make myself focus, I asked a bunch of VTubers I know, and one flesh tuber, if they'd like to react to the video, and promised them it would be available in exactly seven days. That decision made this the most challenging video I've ever made. On day one, I started by watching some instructional videos to understand the process of making my own series, like Nightmind's How to Make a Web Series. I'm not really making a web series per se, but it helped enough. With my newfound expert knowledge, I came up with a plan for actually writing what the video will be about. The things each horror series focus on are a set of emotions, obviously fear, but usually some others too, like paranoia, isolation, that sort of thing. Then what the monster or monsters are and how they leverage that emotion. And finally, who the characters and factions are. I also need to figure out what visual style is of the short, because analog horror series tend to differ quite drastically in their visuals. A question you need to ask yourself when starting a project is, why? Why make this? Obviously, I want to make the next Local 58 in seven days and cement my legacy as the best analog horror creator ever. But seriously, I've always wanted to make my own horror short. Who hasn't? They're really cool. Also wanted to prove, mostly to myself, that it's possible to make something cool and spooky in a really short time frame. Admittedly, I have a little bit of a head start because I'm experienced with editing, but I haven't made anything quite like an analog horror before. Although it doesn't seem that hard, right? Right? They say it's worth considering potential issues too. Uh, yeah, I can't draw. Something cool like the boiled one or even the germa faces in Mandela are completely out of the question. That's gonna make it pretty tough. Before the end of day one, I had a rough concept for what the monster does and why. It's interfering with the scariest people in our society. Psychologists. Since analog horror always involves VHS tapes, why not have it mess with some kind of home testing kit? That way we can show off its effects directly and even introduce actual characters being influenced by this creature. For a little more variety, we can add another layer. The company responsible for the tapes knows something is interfering and is issuing a recall and is showing multiple examples of edited tapes. This allows us to justify showing multiple patients and multiple creepy examples. Here I come up to a problem with this video, the making of video. Every analog horror has multiple layers that need digging through to really enjoy, right? It's scary on the surface, but also scary when you decode it and figure out what's really happening. Is there a way I can explain some of the decisions I've made without spoiling the secret plot of the end product? Uh, spoiler alert, no, not really. In particular, it's gonna be tough to not explain some things about the villain of this piece, who I've decided to call the Proctor. Proctor is a word that refers to a person who oversees tests and exams, and this entity is interfering with these home testing kits. On day two, armed with a general idea of what my monster is and what it's doing, I set about writing a script. Here, I had a real problem. Now, I write a lot of scripts for YouTube, so I thought this would be a breeze. If you've watched a lot of analog horror, you'll notice that there's actually a decent amount of writing. Not only do they have actual dialogue, but there's often a lot of text on screen too. Emergency warnings, scientific explanations, diary entries, stuff like that. None of it is remotely similar to writing a script for an hour long YouTube video about video game lore. In fact, it's completely different. 
I quickly realized I'd need to figure out what scenes I need in the short first. Which sounds obvious in hindsight, but at the time, look, it's my first time doing this, okay? One thing I have learned in the past is that you always need more than you first think, about three times more. So I wrote down a big list of ideas of what scenes I should include. Then I took a break to watch the premiere of my last video, The Law of Logic. Then I got really sick, which carried over into what should have been day three. Because I was sick for over 24 hours and couldn't work, I decided to keep an extra day in the bank if I needed it. I really didn't want to use it, but just in case. Day four, I woke up feeling much better. And as the universe's way of making up for losing an entire day, I had a very interesting dream. I dreamt about an analog horror series that uses classic black and white movie monsters like Nosferatu, similar to what the man in the suit does, but for universal classic monsters. I was too far into this idea to completely change tack this late, but it still helped me flesh out some more scenes. Our monster, the Proctor, is interfering with these tests, but why? To go back to what I said earlier, it's good to really focus in on one emotion when designing a horror project, and for this one, it's nice and simple, fear. So what if the Proctor is trying to understand its target's fears through these tests, then embodying those fears in recognisable ways? What are the most recognisable embodiments of fear in our culture? Horror movies. We'll merge that with our previous idea. The recall tape was going to show examples from different patients' tests that the Proctor had interfered with. We can tie that in with different horror movie monsters. We'll use Nosferatu, of course. We have to make the prophetic dream a reality. But I won't spoil what the other two are. It'll be fun to have a kind of multimedia angle in this project, so instead of just having them injected into the tape, we'll show photographs too. When you think about the really good analog horror series, they often change the format regularly. They might have conversations, emergency warnings, and tutorial videos all in the same episode. It helps keep it fresh and interesting, so I'd like to do that here as well. Before wrapping up for the day, I had an idea. My friend Naven has experience with CRT TVs and VHS cameras. Running some footage through that might be able to really make this video pop. Maybe he could help. I asked some of my friends for pictures of their bedrooms on day 5 and used those to make all of the monster encounter images. Since the monsters are so visually different, I decided to give the Proctor a motif. I tried a few different things, but settled on each monster having the same creepy eyes. Since it shapeshifts, having one aspect stay the same helps clue the audience in that it's actually the same entity. I tried drawing some designs for the Proctor itself, but yeah. But drawing inspiration from some of the big series, we can see that's not actually a huge problem. Thanks to Naven's help, I can have some footage run through an actual CRT screen, and a simple design can end up looking pretty good. With this in mind, I decided to tweak the design and plan for it to be shown on the screen. But then, I got some bad news. Now that's going to be a problem. I hastily threw together some effects to try and mimic a CRT screen, and while it's not the same, it'll do in a pinch. I think. I hope. I started laying down the tracks and getting a really rough overview of the video in DaVinci Resolve, the editing software I use. It's free and it's pretty good. And this is a good segue into the sponsor of today's video, Blackmagic Design, the company who makes DaVinci Resolve. Since this video is all about editing, I reached out to see if they'd like to work together, and they were very happy to support the channel. Every video on my channel was made with DaVinci Resolve, and quite frankly, it's been integral to my success. It's easy to use, and there's a gorillion tutorials online about every single feature. There's an official free version of the software, which, just between you and me, I didn't hit the limits of. So if you're interested in becoming a YouTuber, or even just inspired to make your own analog horror after watching this, then make sure to check out DaVinci Resolve in the link in the description. Thank you again Blackmagic Design for supporting today's video. In fact, the very first sponsor of the channel. Now, back to making some analog horror. I'd spent the last five days planning and making assets I'd need for the video, but you can never fully account for everything you need when you put it together. 
It immediately became clear that the interview scene needed actual voices, and I felt I'd leaned on other people enough, so I recorded it myself. It's important to gather as much information as possible. Well, <coughs> well. <coughs> there's a lot of writing in this video, as there's a lot that needs to be explained. That's not usually an issue for analogue horror, but I'm always looking for ways to spice it up. I decided to splice in the horror sections to break up long sections of text, and to remind the viewer that this is actually a horror video. One thing I enjoy about some analogue horror is that the viewer is engaged in the test somehow. Usually it takes a form of just paying attention to learn a kind of lesson to avoid danger. For ours though, the VHS tapes we're examining are actual tests anyway. Hopefully we can lean into that and have the edited tapes make people look closely and get spooked. Well, that's the plan. I like to get music early to set the mood when I'm editing a scene. Thankfully there's a lot of DRM free music these days and it didn't take very long to find something that fit really well. These tracks give a kind of cheesy, infomercial, educational feel which is perfect for the informative scenes in our video. Between the informative scenes, where we explain the setup and what's happening, and the test segments, we use the pitches as spooky interludes. We use the first one, the Nosferatu creature, early on. It's not super spooky by itself, but it starts to set the mood and let the viewer know they can't take it easy. We also introduce the photographs here, introducing the multimedia aspect. While editing this, I began to realise that it's hard to make something seem… real. Like you really just found these tapes that were used by an actual business somewhere. I criticise horror series all the time for having official wording that is obviously wrong, but writing it myself makes it clear that it's hard to make it right. Most of the wording I rewrote multiple times to sound better, harshly cutting anything that was too casual for the professional VHS tapes is supposed to be. Beyond that, it's hard to make things seem scary in general. You can always just throw in a gory image and a loud noise for a jump scare, and honestly sometimes that works really well, but you've got to earn it. Slowly building the tension to earn that scare without being boring is harder than it seems. Naturally, while editing, I rewatched it over and over, and found that I was making every section too short. Analog Horror's best innovation was being unself-conscious about holding onto a scene for as long as possible. A flash of a dark doorway isn't scary, but holding onto it for a minute will freak you out. It's at odds with most other editing styles, so I don't do it naturally. So I extended the scenes. And again. And again. And spoilers. According to some of the reactions we got, they still weren't long enough. Ah, it's the faster! Lesson learned for next time. On the final day, day seven, I finalised the video. I had finished with half a day to spare, despite getting sick. And despite not being able to use my friend's actual CRT setup, I think the effects I used were alright. Before uploading, I wanted to just stew on it for a little longer to make sure there's nothing else I can do to improve it. Coming up with ideas, designing the monsters and writing the script were way tougher than putting it all together. It's given me a greater appreciation for all the other series I've watched especially the ones that really nail it. Honestly, the hardest part for me was coming up with the idea. Mr. Beast says that having a good idea is one of the most important parts of a video, and after doing this, honestly, I agree. Looking back, I think this video is technically solid, but the idea, it's not as spooky or as interesting as I'd like. Maybe I'm just jaded. I do watch a lot of horror, after all. Maybe the people who react to it will think it's as scary as I intended. All I need to do now is upload the video and send them the link. We are so back. It'll take a little time for Naven to record the video through his setup, but I have an extra 24 hours I have banked from being sick. It's time to use it. Day 8. I woke up to a set of files from Naven. It's my video, run through a CRT screen, recorded from a hand cam and back into the PC. And it looks awesome. The new plan, splice the new recorded footage with the old. I decided that for the most part, the VHS will use the recorded footage and any pictures or multimedia will be raw. It gives the impression of someone watching these cursed VHS tapes while examining other files. I also noticed that, again, some scenes were too short so I tried to extend them. Because it's been recorded through the TV, I can only do so much before it looks and sounds awkward though. 
After all the extensions I've done, the video is a minute and a half longer than it was originally. And that's just from making existing scenes longer. But now, it's done. I made an analog horror in seven days. Ignoring the day I was sick. Now, all that's left is to upload and send to my friends. Let's watch The Proctor Incident. Time for a spooky video. Oh, we're gonna learn something. Ah, it's too fast! The time of the school of psychology is several centimeters. Multiple vigorous tests in the comfort of their own homes. Oh, hmm. Okay, let's take some tests. Hmm. This is me. What is Who's breathing at you? Okay. <laughs> what is this man? <laughs> Looks like there was some kind of like with gigantic hands at the door. Bro, I can't read all that. Trust this what? To? Please be right. No! Stop fast forwarding and I can't read! The load of key differences between correct and edited tapes are the following examples. Wait, are they sending fake tapes past you sometimes? Facial emotion assessment. Oh, we can read it. It's like going to be like Umber. Or maybe not exactly like Umber. I love these. <laughs> Speaking let's go. We can score 10 out of 10. This is sadness. Boredom. Mildly concerned, maybe? Disgusted? Contempt. Mild disgust. Oh. Happy. I would say... This is happiness. Also, the face was not covered for a millisecond. He looks happy. He looks weird. Uh... Oh. Uh, hold on. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> maladaptive. I didn't do that. I'm not maladaptive. Wait. Maladaptive? I do have a lot of maladaptive daydreaming tendencies, I gotta be honest. Uh, a hole? A person? Walking towards me? Who took this hole? What? What happened? No, am I gonna die? I think we're I think we're doing pretty good at these Hmm. Mildly concerning. Hmm, that's a stone statue. I kinda like that. <laughs> I kinda like that. Uh <laughs> Gee. Lately, I've been having weird thoughts. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I like the. I like that. I like the stone like movement. My friends, uh, really, my friends. Relatable. <laughs> no, no, like that. They've been replaced. Oh, that's a specific type of uh, symptom. Feel when you interact with a friend, we, we, you think it has been replaced. What do you think? That lady needs to cut back on the cigarettes. I think. Like holy moly, ma'am. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but that—that that is bad. What does that have to do with anything? 
it's important to gather as much information as possible. Well, I, I guess you need to know what's happening to help me. What's happening, Mark? Tell us. We're going to help you. And to do that, we need to dig into your field and root them out. Okay, maybe therapists don't say that. Oh, weird thoughts. Oh, get a hoodie. It's repeating the voice, sir. health across America. I'm not sure what happened, but I don't feel comfortable with it. God damn it! I hate this! I see you. I see you. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, little buddy. Oh, this guy's kind of cute. He's like, he's just like watching me. Oh, visual. I feel like there was a lot I didn't comprehend about it the first time watching it, but if I watched it several times, I might be able to get a thread of what was happening. Which I think is how most analog core is, so I liked it. Um, a cool video. Thank you. Thank you for sending me that, my friend. I had a, I had a good time. I had a good time with that. I'm not gonna pretend for the camera and be like, ah, ooh, wah. But uh, even if uh, I don't know if, it, if you were able to notice it, because I, I I'm not able to see myself when I react to this, uh, this one was able to keep me kind of nervous uh, during the whole process of it. Uh, honestly, that was fun. Thank you, Mal. Thank you for that. I like I like analog horror. That was a nice little analog horror. So thank you, Mal, for letting me show that or asking me to show that on stream. Over the past year, I've been watching a lot of analog horror, and frankly, I don't go easy on them when I give my opinions. Look, it's fair to criticize something even when you can't do it yourself, but I think you should try to understand the media as much as possible, and part of that is getting your hands dirty. Even if you don't make something good, you gain a greater appreciation of the choices and the work the artists put in. And honestly, yeah. Despite having editing experience myself, it really wasn't easy to make this. Whether or not it's good, I'll leave up to you guys to decide. What did you think of it? You can watch the full video at the link below without the reactions on top. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like to thank my friend Naven for his help with recording. Without his setup, this video wouldn't have half the vibes it does. And my other friends who gave me pictures of their bedrooms. Of course, I'd also like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Blackmagic Design. If you're interested in making your own videos, then definitely check out their editing software, DaVinci Resolve, at the link in the description. Of course, I'd like to thank all the people who reacted. You can find their links in the description. They're all excellent content creators, so make sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank the patrons. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this. If you'd like to support the channel, the Patreon is the best way to do that. You can get early previews of videos, scripts, and even see full videos a week before the general public. And, of course, get your name in the credits. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Morde Duke, and I'll see you next time. I had a, I had a good time. I had a good time with that. Um, hopefully, none of that imagery. Like, I'm, I'm very, I'm acting very funny right now. But <laughs> sometimes those videos come, come back to haunt me when it gets dark out and I'm by myself. So, I, I, I think it'll be okay. That guy was, that guy was kind of friendly seeming. I'm confused. I feel like I'm a little bit outside of my body. The concept of like Earth and humanity and like everything is a little bit more distant. I think that's what you call it. What, like, that's what you want. That's what it's called. Uh. Analog horror, you feel pulled into it, you feel scared. It was very good. This was for Apollo 94, and I will see you next time. Ah, ooh, ah.